Good morning. Welcome. I'm Gillian Davies, the incumbent priest of the Anglican Parish of Salt Spring Island. And I welcome you all wherever you are this morning. Starting today and for the next five weeks, we are in the season of creation. And with churches, Anglican churches all over the world, we are doing a special liturgy. So when you encounter prayers this morning, you think, I don't remember that one or what happened to that one? You can then have a second thought which goes, ah, oh, we're praying this with people at church in South Africa, in Australia, in Germany, in Hong Kong, in the Philippines, all over the world. We are praying for the earth for the next five weeks. So wherever we are this morning, we're united in spirit as we gather and worship together, separated in body, but able to unite in the spirit. And for that, we give thanks to God. We acknowledge the Tsinchothan and the Holkiminum speaking peoples, who are the original inhabitants of these lands where we now dwell. We look toward a new relationship based in mutual respect and appreciation and growing into reconciliation. Let us pray. Please join me in this prayer. God of all life, your care is known through the sparrow and the hairs of our head. Remind us of your goodness in creation and our place within it. That our voice may resound with every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, proclaiming honor and glory to the Lamb through Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of all existence, through your word, you bring peace and calm to fearful hearts and minds. Surprise our complacency through the wonder of your creation and bring us to new faith and trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. 
a windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Hearing this gospel story of Jesus calming the sea always reminds me of the amazing poem by Mary Oliver called Maybe. It starts like this. Sweet Jesus, talking his melancholy madness, stood up in the boat and the sea lay down, silky and sorry. So everybody was saved that night. But you know how it is. When something different crosses the threshold, the uncles mutter together, the women walk away, the young brother begins to sharpen his knife. The whole experience, Mary Oliver observes, leaves them miserable and sleepy, forgetting how terrified they were before Jesus calmed the storm. They forget how it was even more terrifying that Jesus could do that make the stormy sea lie down all silky and sorry who wants to remember that yes mary oliver says jesus himself was a thousand times more frightening than the killer sea that which we don't expect that which we could never have imagined it does frighten us doesn't it this teacher we hang out with talking to the raging sea and wind and they simply Stop? Impossible, right? Only it just happened. It's like us in our time confronted with a pandemic of COVID, which goes on for 18 months heading towards two years and the world comes to a standstill. Impossible. Happens in books and movies maybe, but not in real life. Only here we are. And now we're coming face to face with the climate crisis. Rains that just never come. Temperature extremes out of whack with our temperate climate. And it's not just here. We see it going on all over the world. Perhaps somewhere deep inside us, the words of Greta Thunberg echo. I want you to act as you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if our house is on fire because it is. Why aren't you racing to put out the fire is her big question. This year, the church is using the season of creation to look at and ponder on this question. We're seeking actions grounded in faith to respond to the danger we're in. Really, we too are in a boat on the killer sea. Only what do we do often when we decide we're in danger? In the gospel and in the poem, when we feel like things are out of control, we can respond in very strange ways. We feel vulnerable, so we react. Sometimes we react with anger, like the protesters disrupting Trudeau's campaign events or showing up at BC hospitals. Sometimes we react with violence towards others who appear different. We blame them for what's going wrong. And sometimes we turn the anger inwards and become depressed. We can despair that we have any power to change things for the better. My friend Elizabeth experienced that. She was so overwhelmed by the terrible things happening in the world that she sank deep into depression. She saw so much wrong and so little improvement she saw apathy and ignorance. Did people even care? 
She became more and more discouraged, more and more filled with despair. She could hardly drag herself around or find the energy to maintain her daily life. The world had never seemed so bleak to her. So she prayed like she'd never prayed before. This is what she heard God whisper in her ear. It only matters what you do. Never mind everyone else. Each day, what you do matters. So she began. Each day, one small action. She'd sign a petition. That was it. Or she'd write a letter. Or she might make a phone call to one of her elected representatives. She began to feel better. She began to feel like she was waking up. Her energy came back. She had enough energy to show up at demonstrations and rallies, big things. Every day, just one thing. She said her life turned around, and when I met her, she was a woman of indefatigable energy and good humor, a joy and an inspiration. And the disciples? We know what happened to them. After the execution of Jesus, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and took up his work in spite of their fear. Every day they acted. And that's the crux of the matter. It's that, not, it's that being afraid that does us in. It's when we believe in the fear, when we let it take away our chance to make a difference. We've all been afraid at some time. It's not wrong to be afraid, it's human to be afraid. It doesn't feel very good, but it's a feeling. And feelings pass through and are replaced by other feelings. What remains, what lasts, is what we do in spite of the fear. Do we breathe deep and say, I can do this? Do we pray for wisdom and courage? Do we step back and make space for God to be present in that space of fear and painful vulnerability? Do we invite God's transforming power to turn what's happening into something more beautiful and life-affirming than anything we could have asked or imagined. Because remember this, we may be in the midst of a climate crisis and it may seem terrifyingly enormous and beyond our control, but we do have agency. We can act. We can do small things on our own, one a day, like vitamins, like Elizabeth did, like the disciples did. We can nourish our own spiritual health and we can join together with others and do bigger things. We can begin to heal our planet. We can show up in the world as Christians, as Anglicans, wherever you live. Here on Salt Spring or other places, there are things going on. I found one thing. At noon, this coming Wednesday, there's a countrywide day of action planned. It's right before the English language debates. A chance to show the candidates what the big issue is. This day of action is called Canada on Fire. And you know what? It's happening right here on Salt Spring, too. So I signed us up, the whole church, all of us. And I know you'll show up. Why? Because we are all followers of Jesus and we know it matters. Why? Because it's God's creation that we're defending. And we love God. And we love God's creation. Amen.
As we pray together, please respond to Holy Spirit with the words, help us. Jesus Christ, teach us to empathize with earth. Make our spirit sensitive to the cries of creation, cries for justice from the air, the clouds and the sky, cries of our fellow creatures, deserted and dying. Jesus Christ, Make our face sensitive to the groans of the Spirit in creation, groans of longing for a new creation. Jesus Christ, make our hearts sensitive to the songs of our kin, songs of celebration echoing around us. Christ, teach us to care. Amen. Creator God, you have generously blessed us with an abundance of gifts in this, your world. Help us to share in that generosity by living in a way that ensures that your gifts will continue to be available for all future generations. Holy Spirit, help us. Creator God, the sun, the wind, and the waves are your gifts for the flourishing of the whole community of life on earth. Help us to use them creatively to produce sustainable energy for all. Holy Spirit, help us. Through scientists, engineers, and scholars, new knowledge comes to light. May new developments in the production of sustainable energy protect our fragile planet and promote the well-being of all peoples and all creatures on their journey to wholeness. Holy Spirit, help us. Creator God, you have blessed humankind with understanding, imagination, and memory. Show us how to learn from past mistakes and plan for the future creatively and responsibly. Holy Spirit, help us. Create in us a new heart and a new vision, O God, that the gifts of your Spirit may work in us and renew the face of the earth. May we be one with you so that our work is yours and your work is ours. Holy Spirit, help us. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan and Ezekiel Kumir Kondo, their Archbishop. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for our primate, Linda Nichols, for our National Indigenous Archbishop, 
Mark McDonald, and for the people of the theological colleges and training programs within the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land, Arthur Turner Training School, the Center for Christian Studies, the College of Emmanuel and St. Chad, Henry Budd College for Ministry, St. John's College, Dr. William Winter School for Ministry, and James Settee College for Ministry. In our ecclesiastical province, we pray for the territory of the people Anglican Church. In our diocese, we pray for Anna, our bishop, and for the people of the Congregation of Holy Trinity in Souk. And on our island, we pray for the people of Salt Spring Island Baptist Church and Chris Saffel, their pastor. In our own parish, we pray for our priest, Jillian Davies, and we pray for the work of the wardens and parish council. We also pray for the households of Charles Hingston, Meg Hodges, Nancy Holcroft, Brian Holgate and Charles Roche-Cunu, and ha Peter Howell. This week we pray especially for Kathy Darling, Sam Balden and Mary Balden, Tony and Pam Brentnell, Sharon, niece of Helen and Tony Bruce, Ron Dick, Nancy Holcroft, Colin, son of Joyce James, Mark McDonald and Virginia Shaw Lynn, Doris Minosh, aunt of Claire and Harold Moon, Michael Overholt, Al and Rita Robertson, Mallory and Wanda Stewart, Margaret Spencer, and Nancy Wiegan. Please take a moment now to reflect on and pray for those in your life whom you hold dear. Holy Spirit, help us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who lives with you and with the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the Eucharistic meal. We love you above all else and long to receive you in the sharing of this sacrament. Help us to be aware of your presence with us in spirit, particularly at this time when we are unable to receive you in this sacred meal. We thank you for your promise that you are with us always and that with you at the center, we are united wholly to you, each other, and the world in which we live. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing and encounter the creator who waits to meet you there. Savor its richness and diversity and live as those who praise God for its bounty. And the blessing of the Creator God, the Eternal One, the Risen Son, and the Promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen.
preach the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing to its sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in into God's world, ready to tend the creation.